this just might be the best sub $3,000 PC ever made. Hey guys, Walter with the Black Film Guild, and I think I just built what I'm calling the best sub $3,000 4K editing rig. And I'm gonna walk through a couple of the components with you guys, uh, just show you a little bit about it. There's a bunch of builds online, so I'm not gonna go through the whole thing, but I wanna just walk you guys through a lot of, a lot of the build. And I wanna send a special thanks to uh, PC Part Picker um, for helping with this build. Uh, without them and their website, this wouldn't have been possible. Um, they've been awesome in, uh, in just offering help, and also the community's been a great help too. So PC Part Picker, thank you very much for, the, for, this, uh, for this build. And now I really want to just jump right into it. I'm going to talk a little bit about the components that I used, um, a little bit about what some of the components do, uh, some of the benchmarks that I had, and then why I think this build is best. Uh, really, it's a really good time to build a computer, especially with the chip prices coming down from Intel with resin uh, uh, right on their heels. And then also the new graphics cards that came out, you can get a really, really good graphics card for a couple of, uh, a couple of bucks cheaper. So without further ado, we're going to jump right into it. Okay, so in this in this part, I just want to quickly go through the uh, different uh, products that I selected for this build, and just a little bit about why I selected it. So I went with the i7 6800K uh, just because I wanted to overclock it, and I wanted to make sure it stayed cool. So I went with the Kraken X61 uh, liquid CPU cooler um, to save money on the motherboard. Um, I went with the AS Rock uh, X99 Extreme 4. Um, so that's going to be the LGA 2011 motherboard. And that uh, actually goes with the i7-6800, um, so it's compatible. Um, and then I went with the uh, Vengeance uh, Corsair uh, RAM, the DDR4. Um, I went with uh, 32 gigs, so I brought I bought four 8-gig sticks. And then uh, the storage is where I um, ended up spending most of, the, most of my money. And I waited for things to go on sale in order to get the different types of storage. So uh, this case uh, is really big, and it has room for expansion. So... I went ahead and got the Samsung 850 Evo 1TB, uh, the Intel 750 uh, 1.2TB PCIe solid state. So that's the one that was uh, a little over $500, um, but I think it's worth it. Uh, I waited for it to go on sale. I got it for a little over $500. Bucks. And um, that's going to be make sure everything is super fast. And I mean, I, I set up the, um, uh, the boot drive is actually on the PCIe card so it's booting up in like less than five seconds which is great and then i went with the, the mass storage which is the western digital six terabyte um and 7200 rpm just like a regular you know internal hard drive uh for the video card i went with the geforce uh, gtx 1070 founders edition um i think i paid a little over a little under 400 dollars for that one um and uh, I went with the 1070 versus the 1080 just because I, I was trying to wait for the price to drop, but it really never dropped below, you know, uh, $660. I think that was the lowest I ever saw, maybe $670. So it was a little bit too much for me uh, in trying to keep this um, this build under, you know, $3,000. Um, and then as far as the case, um, I went with the uh, Fantex, um, what is it, Etho, I think, Pro as the ATX full tower. And this is a great case. It's it's eighty. It's about I think I paid seventy dollars, seventy or eighty dollars for this case, and uh, but it has so much space and so much room to build, and you can kind of see that in uh, some of the visuals that I'm showing uh, right now. And for the power supply, I really recommend this power supply. It's the EVGA Supernova, seven hundred fifty watt. It's eighty gold certified, um, and I think I paid uh, like eighty nine ninety nine for this power supply. So it's not cheap. But it comes with everything, and everything's modular, which is which is a huge benefit benefit if when you're building this. I just picked up a random, uh, uh, extra sorry not external, but a um, a CD DVD combo drive uh, just in case I wanted to burn CDs, or you. I think that's one of those things that you should just have a utility CD drive. They're still not obsolete yet, in my opinion. Um, I went with uh, Microsoft Windows 10. I went with the OEM, so that way it's transferable and I can use it in other places. And, you know, I actually ended up buying five of the Noctua um, NF, uh, P, uh, F, NF F12 of uh, the 120 millimeter fans. I bought five, I bought five of them, but 
because this fan's uh, uh, cooling is so good, I ended up t uh, sending all five of the case, all five of the fans back. So I didn't even end up needing these fans. I literally only have the only fans I have in the case is the two fans that the case came with, and the uh, fans that came with the radiator, the liquid uh, CPU cooler. Um, as for the uh, keyboard and monitor, I just picked up uh, two kind of cheaper ones. So an, an, an LG monitor, which I think was like two hundred and forty dollars, and then I found a, a deal on Amazon for thirty bucks for a, a mechanical keyboard, a mouse and a mouse pad. So that's the build that I had. And then uh, I'm going to go ahead and just go through a little bit about what I was looking for with this build. So uh, with this build, I wanted to make sure that I would be able to edit in 4K uh, at, at um, full quality without having to, you know, go half or one fourth. And uh, I wanted to make sure there was no drop frames. Uh, previously on my Mac, when I would export, it would take hours on end to export a full length. And I'd have to go, you know, the computer would be um, pretty much inoperable while it's working, so I'd have to go and do something else. And it would take, you know, sometimes hours. And with this build, I can do the exact same, uh, the exact same amount of editing that, or the exact same amount of exporting that would normally take hours. It will take minutes, literally minutes. So we're shaving off a ton of time, and time is money. So I think this is a really, really great option um, as far as a build. So. This is, I, in my opinion, for how much it was, this is the ultimate build. I think I paid, I know it's under $3,000. Um, I think it's closer to $2,500 what, what it ends up turning out to be for this uh, entire build. And so I, I'm going to go ahead and, again, a big thanks to PC Part Picker uh, for this, uh, this opportunity. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and, and list out my uh, PC Part Picker list. And... Just so you know, this list, the list that I'm going to give, show you is actually um, the price that it, it looks like right now. But because of my diligence and checking on, uh, literally checking every day to see if the price has changed, I was able to cut off at least seven, eight hundred dollars off of this, off of what the listed price is on PC Part Picker. Just from, uh, but you have to be diligent. You have to. Um, they're going to give you some of. They're going to give you the cheapest prices uh, from their list, but. There's others out there that are that that are cheaper, and sometimes the deals are maybe for one day or one weekend. So you have to be very diligent when you're looking uh, to try to find the best deal possible. Also, during this process, uh, some of the things I did is I actually went ahead and did some uh, user benchmark tests just to see what the CPU was like. Um, I I went ahead and, and uh, overclocked this uh, this uh, CPU to four gigahertz. I think that that was a good safe amount. Uh, the CPU is still running at under uh, 30, 30 uh, degrees Celsius, which is which is great. So it's not getting too hot. Uh, the fans are moving a little faster, so it's a little bit louder. Before it was, it, you couldn't even hear the fans going. Now you can actually hear them uh, at 4 gigahertz. So if you if you're concerned with uh, with fan noise, you might want to keep it at the stock 3.6 gigahertz. But in my opinion, why would you get a uh, an unlocked CPU that can be overclocked if you're not going to overclock it? So I think that overclocking it is best. In this case, you're going to get better performance, and you're going to get more bang for your buck uh, with this CPU. So uh, with that being said, please remember to uh, both like and subscribe.